Want to get quicker acceleration or maybe better gas mileage out of your motorcycle? It might just take a simple sprocket swap. We'll tell you what you need to know about changing your motorcycle's final drive gearing in this video from the MC Garage. When we talk about gearing, we're referring to the final drive ratio, which you get by dividing the tooth count on the rear sprocket by the tooth count on the front or countershaft sprocket. This figure represents the number of times the front sprocket has to turn to rotate the rear sprocket, and ultimately it determines how your engine speed translates to road speed and how much torque there is at the rear tire. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of gearing changes, let's talk lingo. When someone refers to a bike's gearing as being tall or high, that means you're gonna have a higher top speed, but at the expense of outright acceleration. If someone says a bike's gearing is low or short, that means you're gonna have really brisk acceleration, but at the expense of your top speed. Here's the confusing part though. A larger ratio, say 3.10, correlates to shorter gearing, whereas a smaller ratio, say 2.7, represents taller gearing. It all goes back to how many times that front sprocket has to rotate, turn the rear sprocket, and thus the wheel. The good news is that while crunching the numbers and looking at the actual gear ratios is helpful, it is not actually necessary. All you really need to know is what the tooth count on your motorcycle is right now, and that is usually printed right on the side of the sprocket. Then you just have to figure out how you wanna change the tooth count in order to change your bike's performance. If you want better off-the-line acceleration, say because you ride a small displacement bike or you ride predominantly in the city or on really tight canyon roads, you're going to want to lower your gearing by either reducing the tooth count on the front sprocket or adding teeth to the rear sprocket. If, however, you want to get better gas mileage or lower your cruising RPM like we want to do with this Kawasaki Versus here, you're going to want to raise your gearing by either reducing the tooth count on the rear or adding teeth to the front. For the most part, people tend to gear their bikes shorter since most motorcycles today come with excessively tall gearing. But even if the gearing on your bike feels like it's way out of line for the way you ride, the reality is you're probably not going to have to make a big gearing change to notice a big difference. In general, folks are going to change the front sprocket by one, maybe two teeth, and then alter the rear by say two or three teeth max. Big pie plates like this honkin' 53 toother here do exist but the only people you're gonna see using them are stunters or hill climbers. If you change your bike's gearing even by just one tooth, you're changing the sprocket diameter, so you're going to need to readjust your chain. Now, most gearing changes of just a tooth or two can be accommodated for by the adjustment at the swing arm, but you don't wanna screw with your bike's wheelbase too much, and if you go with a big sprocket, you're probably gonna find that you need a longer chain. Also, if you've got a fair amount of miles on your current drivetrain components, it's a good idea to replace everything as a set so that it wears evenly. Throwing a new sprocket at an old, worn-out chain is gonna chew it up in a hurry. Another thing to consider when changing your bike's gearing is how it might affect your speedometer. Most motorcycles register speed off the transmission, so if you adjust the final drive gearing, you're gonna throw off the calculation that the ECU is doing. If you've got an older motorcycle with a cable-operated front wheel speed sensor, you should be in the clear, but otherwise you might want to consider getting a speedo healer or a similar calibration device. Now, if you are on a budget or you just want to experiment to see how a gearing change is going to affect your bike's performance, the cheapest and easiest thing to do is to replace the countershaft sprocket. The front sprocket is cheaper, usually about 20 or 30 bucks. It's easier to replace since it's held on with less hardware and one tooth difference on the front is going to make a bigger change to your final drive ratio than one tooth on the rear sprocket. Rear sprockets are more expensive and they're also a little bit more difficult to replace since you have to remove your rear wheel. Finally, when it comes to buying replacement sprockets, you can go the OE route, which is probably going to be a stamped steel affair, or you can turn to the aftermarket where there's a variety of aluminum and steel sprocket options. Aluminum is a lot lighter, but it doesn't have great durability, so it might not be a good option for street riders that are gonna log a lot of miles. That's where a product like the Super Sprox Stealth Sprocket, which actually puts a durable steel chain ring and rivets it to a lightweight aluminum carrier, so you get the best of both worlds. And in case you're wondering, if your bike has a belt drive or a shaft drive, you're pretty much stuck with the final drive gear ratio that you've got. Changing the final drive on those bikes isn't impossible, but it is difficult and can be very expensive. 
Whereas if you have a chain driven bike, you can swap out your whole drive chain in about an hour and for just a couple hundred bucks. So there you go, info on how your final drive ratio affects your bike's performance and some stuff to think about and look out for when you decide to change out your sprockets. Appreciate you guys watching, we hope it was helpful, and we hope that if you have questions or comments, you will leave them below. Until next time, ride safe.